Hi guys and welcome to a slightly noisy version of TechTeamGB. In this video we're going to be taking a look at how to overclock the Ryzen processors, specifically the 1800X, although this applies to any of the Ryzen processors, including the ones that are coming out in Q2 and generally the second half, not just the Ryzen 7 1800X. Now, there's actually two ways to overclock Ryzen CPUs. The first way is through the Ryzen Master Utility, which I'll show you in a second. That's an AMD built utility that allows you to overclock through Windows. Uh, it does require a few resets and stuff like that in between and for me I found it a bit more unstable than just you know just normal overclocking through the BIOS and that is the second way to overclock through the BIOS like usual. I'm using a Gigabyte AX370 Gaming 5 board for this test although we'll be featuring some other boards potentially in this video or in future videos and in future reviews as they come out uh, for overclocking that sort of stuff so feel free to take a look at some of the uh, motherboard reviews that are coming out around this launch as well. Start Starting off with the Ryzen Master Utility, it's a fairly simple tool to use. I do want to make clear that the first profile is actually read only, so you will need to switch to 1, 2, or 3, or 4 before you actually overclock, and you also have some graphs that you can drop down at the top that I recommend having open while you're doing this to make sure that the temperature isn't too high and that the clock speed is actually where you want it. Now for overclocking, it's fairly simple, just drag the slider for the cores, feel free to disable cores as well if you want to really try and push the chip, and then up the core voltage and change any other settings you feel is necessary, but the main ones are just upping the core voltage and upping the frequency and potentially disabling some cores too. And then hit save down the bottom and apply up at the top. Something I also want to mention is that I'm not entirely sure if this overclock actually stays if you were to reset the system or if you have to reopen Ryzen Master and reapply your overclock every time you reset. I think this is more a sort of overclocking tool just to try and push the chip, run some benchmarks and then put it back to the start frequency rather than actually overclocking the chip for a long-term use, although we'll need to do further testing on that. I did also test this with the ASUS Crosshair 6 Hero board that I did a review of yesterday, so feel free to check that review out, but uh, basically I still couldn't get this past 4.15 GHz at 1.55 volts. This was uh, seemingly a relatively hard limit that the chip seems to have. It just will not run faster than this on any of the boards that I've tested, and I also tried using an all-in-one one liquid cooler as well, the Acasa Venom A20, and for me, I think that the important thing to mention is that from what I've seen from the reviews that are currently out, as well as the people that I've talked to who had the samples pre-launch as well, this, uh, you know, this sort of 4 gigahertz to 4.2 gigahertz really seems to be a theoretical maximum for these chips. It doesn't seem to be that stable after that point, so if you are planning on getting one of these chips, it is nice that they're overclockable, they're, you know, the multipliers are unlocked and that sort of thing, but at the same time we just can't really push them all that far, so I'll be excited to get my hands on the 1700X in the coming days and weeks, as well as the 1700, and of course the R5 chips in the fairly near future too. Since I'm using the Gigabyte AX370 Gaming 5 board, we're going to be looking in this MIT tab under the Advanced Frequency Settings and Advanced Voltage Settings. Now this will depend on what motherboard you're using for this, so if you're using an ASUS one, this will be a fairly similar tab like the extreme tweaking as uh, you know settings if you're using an MSI board they're going to be fairly similar I believe it's one of the boxes to the left hand side uh, but it does depend on your motherboard so do take a look in the motherboard manual and stuff like that for how to overclock on your specific board but in this one we're going to go to the advanced frequency settings and change the CPU clock ratio from auto to whatever you fancy now I'm going to go for 4 41 which is the multiplier so that is how many times the host clock value or base clock clock, we are multiplying to get our final CPU frequency. In this case, I'm going with 41, just going to press enter, uh, and that will be up to 4.1 gigahertz. Then go into the advanced voltage settings, and for me, I'm going to change the CPU V core to 4.15 volts. Now, this is because I've been playing around with this, and this is what I think is fairly uh, decent and stable for this specific overclock. The, base, the best way to actually overclock these chips is to incrementally up the voltage and up the multiplier until it either crashes out and then you have to either decrease the multiplier or increase the voltage or either just carry on going until you know you reach something like 1.45 volts or your temperatures get too high. So at, or 1.55 volts, sorry, which is AMD's recommended maximum. So that's what I'm gonna go with for this overclock. We're gonna hit F10 to save and then we'll go back and do some stress testing. I'm going to start with Cinebench as that's a very uh, multi-threaded workload. 
You can also use ADA64 uh, and a few other sort of CPU stress testing tools to make sure that your overclock is stable. If it isn't, come back into the BIOS and as I said, either up the vCore voltage or push the uh, multiplier down by one and see how that gets you, or even down by 0.5 uh, and see where you go from there. Just a few kind of notes of advice. If you are planning on overclocking your chip, I do recommend taking a look at the maximum recommended voltage for it. That is kind of a key point, especially if you're not a professional overclock clocker and have LN2 available and stuff. If you're just doing it with your closet water cooler or even you know something like this which is a, an air cooler then I do recommend taking a look at the rec you know highest recommended voltage for that. Uh, the other thing to mention is that while I do highly recommend you overclock your chip even if it's just by a couple hundred megahertz uh, you know that's effectively a free performance gain for you and especially if you bought one of the Intel k -Skew chips because you effectively paid for the ability to have that because otherwise there isn't normally too much of a difference between the K and the non-K besides the ability to overclock so uh, you know I do recommend overclocking those sorts of chips even again if it's just a few hundred megahertz but at the same time it's still a fairly easy process to do even on these newer chips and as I said I'm not a professional at this so if I do get anything wrong feel free to let me know in the comments down below but uh, yeah, either way, that's uh, that's my main recommendations. Make sure you don't run too hot. Make sure you don't run the voltage too high, which is kind of in contrast to too hot as well. Uh, and just, you know, give it a test. As I said, do incremental uh, pushes and you'll see how far you can go before it's just unstable. Make sure you test on multiple workloads as well before you consider a overclock stable. Don't just do Cinebench or Ada64 or whatever. Make sure you do a variety of different workloads, including gaming and stuff like that, to make sure everything else still works. There was some further testing I believe that I can push this to 1.55 volts if I'm running at 4.15 gigahertz or 41.5 for the multiplier. This isn't quite stable and it is definitely on the maximum range of the voltage if you're you know, doing a standard overclock on a chip that you actually own and aren't a professional overclocker with LN2 and stuff like that. So this is where uh, kind of where I'm gonna go. I did try to push it to 4.2, but it just wasn't stable. It's still not quite stable at this frequency, but we'll give it a shot, try and get the best Cinebench value that we can and then uh, go from there. So after running at 4.15 gigahertz, and we did manage to get it stable at 1.55 volts, uh, I managed to get a full run of 1780 on Cinebench uh, on multi-threaded and 166 on Cinebench uh, on the single threaded, which is actually fairly impressive. Uh, it's still not quite as good as the 6700 and 7700Ks, especially on the single threaded side. Although, of course, on the multi threaded side, this is actually really impressive as a multi threaded number. Uh, but the only thing is that the temperatures are getting relatively high. We're basically idling at 62 to 65 degrees with occasional jumps up to around 70. Another thing to mention is that under full load, we're getting closer to 80 at this. Uh, voltage, so I'm going to step it back down to uh, 4.1 gigahertz uh, at a tenth of a volt lower, so that's a little bit more stable. I did have a few issues even at 1.55 volts getting this one sorted. The maximum overclock I could get with this Ryzen 7 1800X on this Gigabyte AX370 uh, Gaming 5 board was 4.15 gigahertz at 1.55 volts. Now 1.55 volts is actually fairly high, it's the maximum that AMD will allow you to go to in the Ryzen Master tool, so for me I'm going to not that back down to the more stable overclock of 4.1 gigahertz across all cores at 1.45 volts instead which is a little bit more safe for the chip a little bit better for its longevity and all that jazz so uh, that's the, the overclock that I'm going to go with for my full results which you can see uh, anytime now. Starting off with the synthetic benchmarks, as you can see Cinebench R15 does a really good job of showing single threaded performance here. I think the main difference is that because XFR is on and I'm over only overclocking to 4.1 GHz, the single core performance isn't that much different, but on multi-threaded you can see a pretty big difference there. In Asus Realbench, it's really quite impressive how far a lead this has. It looks to be mostly because of the CPU encoding or video encoding uh, benchmark that it does that really kind of pulls it away here. But either way, it's a very interesting thing to see. I'm going to leave a full list of all of my benchmarks and a spreadsheet in the links in the description down below, so feel free to check that one out. In 3D Mark, the overclock score is almost identical to the 6900K, and of course, being a you know double price chip, uh, the 6900K doesn't have too much of an 
an advantage here, so that's quite nice. I think in GTA 5, there's still a lot of optimizations to be had. There's still a 14 FPS gap there between the 1800X and the 7700K, even with the overclock, so something to, to be aware of in the revisiting that I'm going to do in a couple months time. Uh, and I'm also going to try and get my hands back on a 6900K for that revisit as well so that I can get overclocking results for that too. Uh, and same kind of story with Dirt Rally, there's still a 3 FPS difference here, but uh, still interesting to look at. I think my conclusion for the video is that we've definitely returned to the days of the silicon lottery. Some of the overclockers at AMD's own event managed to break a world record for running, I believe, all eight cores at 5.2 gigahertz, I think it was. Uh, I could be wrong on that, and I'll leave a link to an article that will explain that in the description down below. But either way, uh, they, they broke a world record there, which is really impressive. But at the same time, my chip, uh, if I try to go 4.2 gigahertz, even at 1.55 volts, it will just straight up not work. Now, to make it clear, I am not an experienced overclocker, so I could be doing something wrong here. I could just be a complete idiot. So uh, if you have any experience in overclocking, especially if you get your hands on one of these chips, let me know what you managed to overclock to uh, safely or unsafely, if you like, uh, in the comments down below or on Facebook and Twitter. Uh, but I guess that kind of wraps that up, really. So if you enjoyed the video and found it useful and informative, feel free to leave a like, subscribe, and uh, share the video as well. That's the, the best thing you can do uh, for free as such. If you fancy picking up a Ryzen 7, CPU or any of the other Ryzen CPUs as they come out or just anything else. It'd be awesome if you could use the affiliate links in the description down below. It genuinely helps me out. It supports the channel, supports these videos and that sort of stuff. So if you use those, those would be awesome. Also, as I said, feel free to check me out on Facebook and Twitter. Otherwise, I'll leave some videos over here for you and the subscribe button on this side of the screen. And otherwise, uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of it. So thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. And we'll see you all in the next video.